In just hours, millions of Americans could be left without a paycheck. And with the clock quickly winding down, lawmakers still unable to reach a deal. This morning, the question on everyone's mind, will Congress be able to get it done? And with a measure that would have prevented a government shutdown temporarily, failing last night in the House, a shutdown appears imminent at this point. Joining us live from Washington, D.C. this morning to help us understand what this will mean for South Florida is one of our local members of Congress, Representative Maria Elvira Salazar. Good morning, Congresswoman. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. I would like to be in Miami, not in D.C., but here's where the job is calling me. Yeah, a lot of people frustrated about that, a lot of members of Congress. So for you, do you think there is any hope at this point to get this done? Oh, yeah. we. I voted on a CR, meaning a continued resolution, meaning to continue funding the government. I voted last night. Everything indicates that in the next hours, we may be bringing up to the floor another CR. Listen, I'm sure that most Americans do not understand what's really happening. And the problem is that Washington in general, both parties, we have a disease or an addiction called spending. And we got to stop that because the average American is going to pay for it sooner rather than later. I'm not sure if you know that we spend $6 billion a day and we got to borrow that money. So what's happening here is that within the Republican Party, there are some folks who are saying we got to cut that. It's just the method and how to cut it, not the goal. We all have the same goal. We got to reduce the debt. We got to reduce the spending. So that's what we're fighting for. You know, at this point, with the clock ticking here, would you be open to vote on a short-term spending bill that came down from the Senate? Well, I, yeah, of course, we have to, because at this hour, we have to. That is what indicates that we need to do. And then after that, continue voting on the different uh, spending bills that we are putting together. Again, most Americans don't know that we have 12 appropriations. That means that there are 12 sectors of the government that need to be funded. Homeland, veterans, uh, health, education, and those have to pass through the House of Representatives and voting. Something else that we need to uh, also point out is that we need help from the Democrats. This thing of just voting all Dems or voting all Republicans, we need to end that. We're bipartisan. We need to find some Republicans, some Democrats to vote for one bill and move it forward. And the extremes of both parties, leave them aside and continue the, we, we're a super majority. The Dems, the moderate Dems and the moderate Republicans were a super majority in the United States House of Representatives. Yeah, you touched on that a little bit here. So many are blaming, you know, that group of hardlining Republicans for yeah. that stop gap funding bill, not passing last night through the House. Uh, what's your view on those Republicans that are taking this hard line here? Listen, uh, the view is what I just told you. I don't want to criticize anyone because each person and each uh, congressperson represents its district. I represent 27. I know exactly who lives in Miami and its areas. And we know that we have to be bipartisan. We also know, and the people that vote for me in 27 understand that we cannot be spending six million, six billion dollars a day, something that their kids are gonna pay. So we need to find a method to start reducing that, not only the debt that we owe, which is $33 trillion, that's owed. And I'm gonna have to tell you that the servicing, meaning paying for that debt is $800 billion a year. Don't quote me on that uh, figure, but I know it's many, many billions. So we gotta start reducing that. And at the same time, we have, to, we have to balance the budget. How do we get to do that? Well, cutting spending on the 12 different bills that I just uh, mentioned. So, but we have to go gradually without killing anybody. And that is the thing that there was, there were, uh, there are instances when one group says to the other, I cannot, I cannot harm, I need to benefit different sectors of society. So, you know, hey, democracy is messy. Uh, but still is the best method. And going through this exercise is the way that is gonna put us through. But I repeat, we need to find bipartisanship. We need to find some Democrats that if they like the bill that we're putting forward as Republicans, they need to vote with us. Not this thing that, oh, I'm not gonna vote because it's a Republican bill. No, I vote with many bills that I consider that are Democrat, that I consider are good for 27. 
So, you know, the clock is winding down here and there are tens of thousands of military members right here in Florida and there are thousands of them in South Florida, uh, including members of the Coast Guard here. Uh, what would you say to these federal workers, our military members who are really concerned with, you know, uh, 14 hours or so left before the government could yes. potentially shut down? that we know that they need to get paid, that we're working, I am working very diligently and voting for every continuing resolution so these folks can get paid. But I wanna to mention to you, uh, those services that are not going to be affected, whether there's a shutdown or not. Social Security will continue receiving their services, Medicare benefits, Medicaid, um, food stamps will continue all throughout the month of October. So I understand that veterans in and some of the federal employees may not be getting paid immediately, but they will be. They will be receiving pay, uh, uh, their their payments back once the government uh, opens up again. But listen, everyone understands that this is shutdown business is not good for America. It's not good for America. So we are working diligently. A very important group of Republicans and Democrats in order to prevent this shutdown once again. So it's Saturday, uh, Sunday, we're gonna be here all throughout the weekend. We're not leaving until we get this done. You know, we spoke to Democratic Representative Sheila Mishur Phyllis McCormick last hour, and I asked her what it yeah. would take to get this done. So she said new leadership. So what's your take on that? Well, new leadership, uh, she may have that opinion, but I do believe that there has to be some leadership within her party to come to the table with us, the Republicans, and put together something that is palatable, something that is beneficial for the United States. I repeat, this thing, this, this new situation that we're facing in Washington, where if you bring a bill and if all the Republicans need to agree with it, or if the Democratic side brings a bill and all the Democrats need to, uh, need to agree with it, this needs to end. Remember Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill, they worked together and they got a lot done. So that's what I would like to do. I'm one of the most bipartisan members of Congress. Why? Because I have a very bipartisan district. So you got to represent who elected you, but it's good for America to work together. And I just told you there is a super majority between moderate Republicans and moderate Democrats that want to work together. And that is one of the, that's one of the, um, uh, goals that I have here in Congress to work with problem solvers, those groups that understand that the force and the strength is in the middle. So as you head in today, you're still positive you can, you know, achieve what you want to. Congress can get this done. I think that within the next few days or maybe within the next few hours, it's Saturday morning. Let's see what happens Saturday, what happens Monday, I mean Sunday and Monday, but I'm sure that something is going to be resolved, that everyone is working hard. So within the next, during the weekend or during the next few hours, we can get something done. All right, Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar joining us this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm.